That's wonderful when they don't expect anything. And then God blows the minds of niggas who didn't expect anything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Blow their mind. Blow that. Since they're going to talk about you anyway, God might as well give them something to talk about. Anybody here got a whole gang full of haters where every now and then you just want to say notice all your haters just, it's all right if you hate me, but you are too early to be hating on me because I'm just in a new beginning, baby. I'm just getting started. You're rolling your eyes and sucking your teeth at an entry? Too early. You better wait a little while. Save your hateration for the end. But if you got haters, you'd rather know who the haters are. So we don't go through these periods of pretending. It's all right. And you're going to get over it. Because whenever people hate you, God will always have you in their face. Every time you turn, bam, here you go again. Oh, nobody else? Anybody beside me? Every time they turn, bam, here you go. Here you go again. The guess why I say you might as well get used to seeing me. Might as well get used to me. Because I ain't going nowhere. Whether we're reading the daily paper, or listening to the radio, or watching television, the news is filled with one, one might call the truths of discouragement. Discouragement and even despair. Life is like a continuous newsreel showing the futile actions of people trying to live without a biblical hope. One solidly fixed on God as their defense and their refuge. I'm glad I'm not out here in ministry by myself. Look at somebody and say, I ain't by myself. I got a defense and a refuge. Without question, we live in a strife-ridden world. One torn by wars, by famine, by disease, and by sickness, by natural disasters of gigantic proportion by injustices and corrupt governments run by self-seeking politicians who are like capricious children. But what is even worse, they rule over a populace that by and large has become indifferent, indifferent to the moral improprieties in its leaders. Our world is a polluted but by demonic powers, polluted by humanistic ideas where man is wise in his own eyes, clever in his own sight. He is a man that stands on an island alone. I'm so glad that I don't worry about standing by myself. I don't want to be more than what God made me and I'll never allow anybody to push me on an island to separate myself from those that are my strength. People who try to push you before your time call themselves encouraging you while they pat you on the back. They're not patting you. They're pushing you, trying to make you go ahead of God. But how many of us have made up our minds for all the years in ministry that we made mistakes? This is going to be the year where I obey God totally. Try to push you over the edge through a satanically inspired man made wisdom. Man perverts, distorts what is good and what is wholesome. And in the process, they take people further and further away from God. 
as it is in Isaiah's day. Evil is called good, and good is called evil. Darkness is substituted for light, and light for darkness. Bitter is substituted for sweet, and sweet for bitter. The root of the problem is that we have become wise in our own eyes, clever in our own sight. For now we live in a day where we have not only taken prayer out of schools, but now it is against the law for a judge to even have a copy of the Ten Commandments in the courtroom or in the classroom. And we're wondering what's going on in our future. But I wish I had somebody in here that believed whatever they try to do against Against us, God is gonna be certain that we'll always come it. Is there anybody here yes, sir, that's coming by the blood of Jesus? I don't care what they do around me. Touch somebody, say, They can't touch me. Can't touch me. Do whatever you want around me, long as you don't put your hands. Oh, yeah. Anybody else, it's all right. You can say what you want to say. You can act unseemly and ugly all you want as long as you don't touch me. Don't make this ghetto come out long as you don't touch me. See, I know the rest of y'all got it all together. I ain't there yet. I have to pray. Anybody else? I got to pray. I have to pray. I have to pray and I have to take a minute to process everything I'm about to say. I got to let it run through my mind and imagination and everything. Because it ain't no telling what will come out of this mouth. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Okay, y'all go ahead. Y'all deep people. Is there anybody here that's a new creation? I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because if it wasn't for the Spirit of God, ain't no telling what I would say. People forget where you come from. Thank God for making me over. Not every now and then making me over again. I said, anybody else been made over again? I'm talking about since you got saved. Since you received the whole. Okay, I don't have nobody here. I wish I had somebody that would be honest. That every now and then I have to stand at the temple of God. Have to stand at the threshing floor of God. And say, Father, make me. Lord, make me over. It's not the sins that you commit. It's those things that you think in your mind. That's why the old folks used to pray and say, Lord, keep my mind. Keep. No, nobody else. Lord, keep my mind. Lord, Father, please keep my mind stay. What it said there, give me your do right mind. Thank you, Lord. In the first 39 books, somebody be my timekeeper, give me 10 minutes. In the first 39 books of the chapter of Isaiah, the prophet graphically portrays this whole scenario when man rejects God's revelation and turns to his own cleverness had been had there been in Jerusalem newspapers like we have today maybe it'd been called the Jerusalem Daily News <laughs> or the Jerusalem Post Jerusalem Times I can imagine if it had been a newspaper in Isaiah Day at the front page would probably read about the same as those of our front pages for today. Hillbilly win. Clinton, so what victory in West Virginia? Did y'all see the newspaper? Life's a beach. 
foreclosure crisis 